because this is very, um, I should say, information that you don't hear quite often uh, through other circles. So uh, we're going to start a four-part series, starting with Land of the Giants tonight. And we're going to go with um, this presentation is going to be um, basically looking at the days of Noah, what happened before the flood. And we're going to look at this with insights that you probably had never heard of before. And uh, so this will be the first of the four part. Second part will be uh, next month. This is called a Strong Delusion, Fallen Angels and Demons Revealed. Tonight we're going to cover a topic that's of truly of biblical proportions. This is a topic that most people in the world and most people in the church for that matter absolutely believe that it's irrelevant in a modern society. This is a topic that modern day myths, uh, fairy tales, legends, and yes, Hollywood movies are made of. So relevance in a modern society, look at the evidence. This is a photograph of a fossilized hammer. This was found in 1934, and it came from a, a layer of sedimentary sandstone where dinosaur footprints and giant human footprints have been found at the same layers. Now, the metallurgical composition is 96% iron, 2.6% chlorine, 0.74% uh, sulfur with no carbon. Density tests revealed an ultra-high casting quality with no internal bubbles. Now, more surprising is the fact that this hammer could not have been formed under our present atmospheric conditions. The atmosphere had to have been twice as dense as it is now. In fact, if you look at this hammer, you see this little notch right there? That's the sample they took off. That's why it's a little bit shiny on that little dot right there. So when they did the assay test. This is exactly what the water canopy conditions would have, in a pre-flood environment would have produced, a, a much denser atmosphere. This is a human footprint found in New Mexico that presents a very major problem in regards to dating layers of strata. This is a, a footprint made by a giant humanoid. The print was determined to be that of a female, um, and the footprint is 18 inches long. It's also determined this giant was at least 10 feet tall on the level of uh, Goliath, okay, and probably weighed about 1,000 pounds. Here's a photograph of a fossilized human finger found in the exact same layers of strata as dinosaur remains as well. Now, according to evolutionists, dinosaurs and humans were supposed to have existed 65 million years apart from each other. And yet, here's a fossil of a dinosaur print, and we can see, of course, the three-toed uh, Trisopterops uh, type of footprint of a dinosaur. But in the middle, we see the appearance of a human print inside the dinosaur print. And again, but in this case... Instead of the footprint being inside the dinosaur print, the human footprint was laid down first, and then the dinosaur print came by and superimposed on top of the human print. And yet again, a fossilized human hand found in the exact same layers as dinosaurs were found as well. Now, by the mid-1990s, there were as many as 18 documented sites worldwide of human footprints, found either near, alongside, or within dinosaur footprints. Now, some sites also reveal giant footprints. However, since then, subsequent new findings of sites have been kept confidential and in many cases have been quarantined from the public. Okay, I know this for a fact this is happening. Uh, these findings raise a serious problem for scientists of evolution and are considered uh, to, be, uh, to be a major threat to the entire educational system that is currently ingrained in our society. Bones of giants have been uncovered in the United States from as early as 1792 to modern times in the northern part of the country, for instance, North Dakota, New York, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Minnesota, in the Midwest U.S. of Ohio, Indiana, Tennessee, Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, and Kentucky also in the southern part of California, Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico. It's been said on several occasions that bones have been submitted to the Smithsonian Institute for analysis, and that each time that the specimen submitted, they were never released back to the finder, and they were never put on display, and no record of their existence is ever available. It's like these specimens are submitted and they go into this black hole, never to be seen again. 
Now, according to researcher John Miller, he states this, the North American Indians believed that the first race of human beings were giants. In the autobiography of William Buffalo Bill Cody, Cody writes that while camping on the South Plate, a Pawnee Indian came into the camp with what the Army surgeon pronounced to be a giant thigh bone of a human being. When Cody asked about where such a bone might have come from, the Indian replied that long ago a race of giants had lived in the area. This race of men had been three times larger than normal men and were able to outrun a buffalo and even carry it with one hand and tear off the leg to eat. Now think about that very carefully. Three times the height of a man is 18 feet tall at six feet. And it can outrun a buffalo, pick up a buffalo in mid-stride and rip off a leg and eat it in mid-stride. Now, I found this quite interesting, so I, I did some research on my own. And I went into the archives, and I looked at uh, uh, Buffalo Bill's autobiography, and I read it for myself, okay? So I want you to know that I'm very careful about looking up things and making sure it, it is what it is, okay? And I found another reference, okay? This is what I found in Buffalo Bill's uh, autobiography. He says that the Indians were telling him that the, these giants denied the existence of the Great Spirit, so he caused a great rainstorm to come, and the water kept rising higher and higher so that it drove out these proud and conceited giants from the low ground to the hills and thence to the mountains. But at last, even the mountaintops were submerged. Then those mammoth men were all drowned. Here's what a 47-inch human-shaped thigh bone femur looks like in relation to the normal height of a human being. This is a giant jawbone. This was found 20 miles south of Lovelock, Nevada, in comparison to a human jawbone. There are accounts, guys, I'm going to tell you this, that uh, I don't have this uh, with me, but um, there are accounts that they found humanoid molars, okay, two inches long. And some of these jawbones have two rows of teeth, not one row. This is a scale. And as you can see on the far left-hand side is a present-day man averaging about six feet, plus or minus a few inches. Next to him, that uh, normal man, is a 15-foot human skeleton found in southeast Turkey in the late 1950s uh, in the Euphrates Valley during road construction. Many tombs containing giants were also uncovered at that site. The third one in is Maximus Thrax Caesar of Rome, and he reigned between 235 and 238 A.D., and his skeleton was an 8-foot, 6-inch skeleton. Next to him, of course, is Goliath, as we saw, king, killed by King David with a slingshot. He was almost 10 feet tall. Next to him is King Og, spoken of in Deuteronomy, as we saw too. Chapter 3, he had an iron bedstead of 14 feet long by 6 feet wide. Now, King Og was at least 12 feet tall. He was at least 2 feet taller than Goliath. And some say he was up to 18 feet in height but for sure he was at least 12 feet. Next to him, a 19-foot, 6-inch skeleton was found in 1577 A.D. under an overturned oak tree in the canton of Lucerne in France. Next to him is a 23-foot skeleton found in 1456 A.D. beside a river in Valence, France. And next to that is a 25, 6-inch skeleton found in 1613 A.D., and uh, it was near the castle of Chamon in France. This was claimed to be a nearly complete find. Almost beyond comprehension or believability was the find of two separate 36-foot-tall human remains uncovered by the Carthaginians somewhere between 200 and 600 B.C. Is this possible? Well, let's look at God's word. Let me go back to, to the source. Amos 2.9. God's saying this, Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of cedars, and as he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Okay, Not only was this giant height of the cedars and strong as oaks, God is saying he also destroyed the fallen angel influence from above and the earthly woman uh, cohabitation from, from beneath. So he's referring to the heavenly and the earthly at the same time, from the roots from above, the fruit from above and roots from beneath. 
These are giant axes. These were found in a sumer outside of Baghdad, Iraq. In fact, these were on display uh, in, a, in a museum in Baghdad, actually. And the size of the axes is, is obviously not uh, built for normal, normal human-sized people. Giants appear in the Netherlands, uh, in the legends of, uh, sorry, of Australia, Bavaria, Belgium, Brazil, Chad, Czech Republic, Chile, China, Dominican Republic, England, France, Germany, Greece, Holland, in, I, India, Italy, Kazakhstan, Laos, Malta, uh, Morocco, the Netherlands, Nova Scotia, Pakistan, Palestine, Pagonia, the Philippines, Poland, Rwanda, Russia, Scotland, Sicily, Sicily the Solomon Islands, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Tel de Fuego, Turkey, the United States, Wales, Zanzibar, also in the ancient Inca, Tolkien, Nordic cultures, just to name a few, all over the world. So based on that, a four-foot uh, footprint would equate to a, a 24-foot giant. Okay, So two and a half times the size of Goliath. And yet there were 36-foot tall giants found in the archives. This is Mount Hermon. This is the exact location where the sons of God, the fallen angels, came to earth for the first time. They chose the daughters of men and began their campaign of genetic contamination upon the earth at this location. Hermon in the Hebrew is Shermon, which comes from the Hebrew in the uh, word Sharam, by destruction, make accursed, consecrate, and destroy. And by the way, the word consecrate, we're going to see that again in the book of Enoch uh, later on. So as we look at this location, this high place of 9,000 feet with a flat level top, this location of the first contact between fallen angels and humans, uh, first contact, of course, being since the fall of Adam and Eve at the Garden of Eden. We can now see with with the Garden of Eden. We can now in the building of structures to reach unto heaven. This became temples of worship to the gods. Enoch is quoted in Jude. Now, the, the book of Enoch is not in the Bible. We know that, right? So why does Jude quote word for word, exactly word for word, from the book of Enoch? Because, by the way, the book of Enoch was written far before Jude ever walked the face of the planet. Okay, so he quotes Enoch word for word. So Jude 14.15 is exactly 1 Enoch 1.9. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to conceive, uh, sorry, convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now this scripture describes the second coming of Christ with his tribulation saints uh, that stopped the war at Armageddon when Jesus cast judgment upon the nations of the earth. Now we're going to have a brief look at some of the other interesting scriptures. So we're going to quickly we're going to look at the whole book and look at some highlighted scriptures. First Enoch one two. From them I heard all things and understood what I saw, that which will not take place in this generation, but in a generation which is to succeed at a distant period on account of the elect. Enoch is shown a vision by the angels of God, much like how Daniel was shown his vision in the book of Daniel and how John was shown his vision in Revelation. Enoch states that he is shown all things that pertain to a generation at a distant period of time. Understand, it's not an upcoming generation or a future generation, but a distant generation. And that particular generation concerns the elect which are the God's chosen people in the latter days at the time of the rapture. The reason why the book of Enoch is being becoming uh, um, an item right now is because I believe sincerely that God is revealing this to us at this time. We are that distant generation. 